my goat a goat catcher? <laughs> Five stars, I mean to go on. Um, I don't know how many of you... Well, Nick started a bad joke, so I thought I'd keep the tone at that level. Um, I don't know how many of you have actually seen uh, Match of the Day, or familiar with Match of the Day, but is it me, or the longer that goes on, and the older Alan Hansen gets, the more he sounds like a drunken Glaswegian? You know, um, give you an example. Hi, welcome to Match of the Day. My name's Des Lynham. Of course, I don't do it anymore. Gary Lineker does, but I can't bloody do him. <laughs> I have to say, what did you think, Alan, of that particular, particular goal? Well, what can you see? Well, I've got talent. He's going up to the ball. He's going to the lines of the lines of the area. <laughs> Um, sorry Al, didn't quite get that one. <laughs> well, you know, he's got a magnificent towel. <laughs> and he's going along and he's getting a <laughs> Yes, um, I'm afraid I'm going to have to replace you with someone slightly more coherent. What? Yes, I suppose he'll have to do. So, what did you think, Mr. Oz? Oh, bloody hell, mate. I don't know what I'm doing here, do I? Okay, going to do another comedian for you now. Um, I don't know how many of you um, actually watch a program, big fan of, uh, called Mock the Week. Yeah. But if you do, you'll know who this is, won't you? <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Andy Parsons. I don't know about you, but I've been watching the presidential elections. And I have to say, ladies and gentlemen, America, greatest democracy in the world they would have you believe. Now I don't know about you, but here's a democracy where we've got a current president who's a son of a former president, and we may well have a future president who's a wife of a former president. Now say what you like about Britain, but I can't see us ever electing Mark Thatcher or Norma Major. Of course in Britain we crave self-deprecation, that's something we're very, very good at, ladies and gentlemen. Self-deprecation. Give you an example. Only in Britain could you release a book called Crap Towns. And not only is it a bestseller, but six months later, they have to release a book called Crap Towns 2. Because people wrote in to complain that their town wasn't in the first one. <laughs> one thing I have no time for, ladies and gentlemen, is something called acupuncture. That's alternative medicine I am not very happy with. Here is, for those who don't know, here is a practice of putting needles into someone to make them feel better. As opposed to voodoo, which is a practice of putting needles into an effigy of someone to make them feel a lot worse. Now I don't know about you ladies and gentlemen, but I've often wondered if you've got identical twins and one of them's having acupuncture, the other one might be having quite a bad day. <laughs> Reality TV, oh, no particular time for that either. That really gets on my wick. Reality television, hate it, ladies and gentlemen. The only reality TV I would like to see is one I thought of, right? I think this would be great. You'll call it Find Osama, okay? In which 12 minor celebrities are dropped into the Afghan desert and they have to find Osama. Now the way I see it, they either find Osama or we lose 12 minor celebrities. Either way, it's an app. <laughs> I have, must confess to you ladies and gentlemen, I do like to sleep a little bit in the nod. I do sleep in the nod, but there is a practical reason for this. And the practical reason is that should a burglar attempt to break into the house, the only thing slightly more scary than him is the sight of me in the altogether. Either that, or perhaps wearing a gift mask, saying, I've been waiting for this moment for years. <laughs> I do say, ladies and gentlemen, that if you've got problems, you should tell your friends, and then their problems will go away. I had problems, ladies and gentlemen. I had lots of problems. I told my friends. I talked for hours and hours and hours. My problems went away. So did my friends. <laughs> of course I have a solution for this now. I now tell all my problems to taxi drivers. <laughs> there are two good things about this, ladies and gentlemen. Number 
number one, it stops taxi drivers telling you their problems. And number two, you find you get to your destination that bit quicker. Okay, um, my name is uh, Rich Hall. Bit of a, uh, oh, nice to see some fans in the audience there. Uh, uh, he's a bit vague, I don't know if you know, like that. But uh, one thing he has been doing, um, he's been looking into, or I should say, ladies and gentlemen, I've been looking into blues history. I enjoy blues songs. And I was looking at, uh, particularly at, you know, the old British prison songs, because a lot of those in America are, you know, well, not British ones, but American ones. And uh, I've, I've managed to find one, ladies and gentlemen, just today. And uh, it's a British prison song. I've got it here. Uh, I'm going to share it with you, ladies and gentlemen. It's called Death Row Blues. Okay, so here we go. Uh, Chris, if you don't mind, uh, shades, please. Where are they going? I have to use these. Ah, oh, there. Music maestro. <laughs> Woke up this morning with no faith and no hope. I really wish I could have one last smoke. As they prepare to take me to a place where they strap you in. But as we head down, down the runway and runway. Whoa, 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 whoa. Runway? Oh. Sorry, my mistake, ladies and gentlemen. It's actually called Heathrow Blues. Thank you very much.